Welcome to Law Firm Marketing Mastery. I'm Christopher Small. Law Firm Marketing Mastery brings together the best coaches in the industry to teach you how to crush it with your law firm. Imagine having a bunch of experienced mentors teaching you their expertise, packing decades of research, testing, and tough lessons into a concise curriculum. I've created one of the premier law firm coaching programs in it, available anywhere, and it's free. This is a show that I wish I had a decade ago. Now, this show is about you, and I'm here to help you start and build your best law firm. So make sure to stay up to date with everything going on here, as well as getting some killer free stuff by signing up for the newsletter at lawfirmmarketingmastery.com. If you're new to the show but want to know more about what I teach here at Law Firm Marketing Mastery, check out the Getting Started page at lawfirmmarketingmastery.com slash start dash here. That's where I've got the fundamentals of starting and building a successful law firm, such as choosing a niche, naming your firm, search engine optimization, internet marketing, leadership, mindset, and more. That stuff is all obviously extremely important to your success, so make sure you get a handle on that as well. I've also got Law Firm Confidential, a members-only site dedicated to starting and building a successful law firm, and the Inner Circle, an exclusive mastermind group for lawyers wanting to take their firm to the next level. Details on that at lawfirmmarketingmastery.com, or just give me a call or even email me at chris at lawfirmmarketingmastery.com, and I'll tell you exactly what you need to know to get started with that. I'm looking forward to meeting all of you here at Law Firm Marketing Mastery. Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another week of Law Firm Marketing Mastery. I hope it's been a great quarter for you. The quarter is coming to an end, and I wanted to uh, start you off on the fourth quarter with some great, great uh, information. And today, I've got it for you. Uh, I did an interview with this guy named Mark Cerniglia. He's the co-founder of this uh, agency called One Marketing. And uh, I talked to him for about an hour, and he had some great, great information to share, including a tip that you can use to make money today. You don't have to pay anything, you don't have to do anything. Using just the people that you know, you can make money. Um, you can get more clients. You can do better with your business. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention here at the very beginning is that I have, um, you know, we filled up the first uh, Inner Circle Mastermind group and uh, I, I've decided to start another one. The first one's been going so good and I have a, a, a one person that already wants to be in it. So if you've been considering joining a mastermind group and want to get those kind of those benefits, then, you know, consider checking, checking this out. It's a uh, law firm marketing mastery.com forward slash mastermind, and you can get all the details there. So uh, with that, let's just get right to it. There's great information here and uh, enjoy the interview. See ya. One of the questions I most often get from listeners and readers is what should I do with my website that will get me clients? If you've been asking this question, then today is your lucky day. My guest today has spent the last several years thinking about how to make the internet work for you, making it work for clients, and teaching people how to build a strong business foundation on the internet. He is the co-founder of One Marketing, a company that helps law firms create professional websites and then provide ongoing marketing that drives traffic to the site and makes you look like an expert all at the same time. It is my pleasure to welcome to the show, Mark Cerniglia. Welcome. Hey, Chris. Glad to be here. Did I get the intro right this time? You sure did. Yeah, so we had to just re we had to redo it, and we're gonna we're gonna pull the curtain back here a little bit. Um, and this is one of the things that we're gonna talk with Mark about. But he they they're so, sort of doing like a a, a slight rebrand that in includes a a new launch of their website. So I had this intro sort of put together, the one that I just read to you, and it had some um, some things that were no longer correct. And uh, we're gonna blame LinkedIn because they 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 suck and they won't let you update certain aspects of your profile in certain ways. Uh, we're going to blame me for not just talking to you about it beforehand. And that's it. You get no blame because you're the guest. But uh, I like it. Anyway, it's fun to pull back the curtain. So say, say hello to everybody. And, and, and you know, just real briefly, if there's any, um, if I left out or anything, or if you want to expound, expand on sort of what you, what you do, then this is a great time to do that. Sure, sure. Well, um, right. So like I said, my name is Mark and uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a partner. I'm a co-founder of an internet marketing firm. We do primarily work with, with lawyers, law firms, some other professionals. And what we mean by internet marketing is a lot of the things you might already think of, websites, social media, uh, blogging, email newsletters, video. Um, but I'm sure what we'll, we'll dialogue tonight about is that just because some of the items or tools might seem the same, that doesn't mean that what we do is necessarily uh, just like everyone else, but but that that's soon to come, and um, and you know that that's kind of who we are and, and what we do. Okay. All right. Well, no. Let's get. Let's let's. I'm curious. You've piqued my curiosity. So, what what 
Um, and, and we'll get into it in more detail, but just real briefly, what is it that, what, that makes you guys, uh, different from, you know, just, um, uh, someone you may find, you know, in a Google ad or something, you know? Sure. Well, to answer that question, kind of really, it's kind of a core philosophy question, you know, so everybody might want to lean in and, 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 uh, you know, if you needed to, you know, go to the bathroom or get a cup of coffee, you might want to pause now because this is not a short answer. <laughs> okay. All right. Get your notepad out, right? <laughs> or get your notepad out. But he, here's the way I like to say it. Okay. Our goal, one of our goals actually is to help lawyers kind of rethink how internet marketing should work for their firm. And the best way to do that is to remove the word internet and just think about marketing. Marketing, And there are a lot of truths that we already know about marketing that we wouldn't ever argue. Things such as there's a lot of value to being seen as an expert. You know, it, it, it's really important that people trust you, your product or your service, okay? In the marketing world, we call that building a brand, right? Nobody would argue with that. Um, everybody knows about top of mind awareness, the importance of staying connected, staying top of mind and how important that can be for referrals, business development. So again, in, in marketing, no one would argue that concept. And then finally, visibility, right? I mean, we all know that visibility is big, just kind of being known, being out there. That's why, you know, a lot of lawyers might still do traditional things like billboards, park benches, commercials, yellow pages, if that even still exists in your city. I, I mean, you know, but no one would argue these concepts. But it's like when we put the word internet in front of marketing, it's like all of a sudden we forget all of those things and we get laser focused on one thing, and that thing is called Google and search right. rankings and terms like SEO. Now, I'll be, I want to be real clear in saying I'm not saying that part doesn't matter, but it's a piece of the pie. And, and so what makes us different, to answer your question, is we look at the basics of marketing, building a strong brand as an expert, staying top of mind, increasing referrals, becoming more visible. We look at those strategies that no one would argue with in terms of marketing and we say how can the internet serve those needs so when we look at social media blogs any of these things we look at how can it serve those core philosophies because that is what makes marketing work and and, and there's more to dive in there but that's kind of the, the 10,000 foot view but it is important to start there because strategy should be what shapes any type of marketing or any type of business development you do and so it's really our strategy and our our vision and our philosophy that makes us different and what we're focused on and how we build our services around those focuses for our, our clients. Okay. All right. That's great. I, I uh, agree with everything you said 100%. It's kind of a, a lot of the things that uh, I talk about on here. It's sort of the idea. Um, you're right. People get fixated on SEO and things like that. And, and it's funny that, that people will sometimes, you know, celebrate being, um, you know, maybe like on the in the first three spots of Google, but they their bank account balance doesn't go up anymore because their their website sucks and it doesn't convert. You know, or it doesn't uh, they don't speak to their ideal client, or you know, there's a whole bunch of other things that you got to think about. And then they don't have any lead capture, right? They don't do anything anything to sort of back that up and continue the process. Um, so that's cool. What what uh, how did you how did you get into this whole uh, internet marketing game? You know. What's a, what's your backstory? Sure. Well, it kind of hurts my business partner actually. He has a, a background in legal marketing, and and then um, I also have a background in marketing. And him and I just kind of connected. And and really, this is actually a short answer. We basically looked at at, at marketing, internet marketing, and, and 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 really for professionals like lawyers, and just realized that there's a better way for all of this stuff to be done. And right. and and, that, and that's our goal. There is, and I I mean, you know, um. I guess as as someone that could potentially use your services, I must admit there are a lot of options out there, and most and I think I'm a little bit different. I think than 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 what a potential client might be in that I um, probably know a little bit more about sort of what goes on behind the scenes, but I know that it's still hard to to to, to tell who is good and who has good intentions and. Who is going to stick you into a hopper, you know, um, and just do a bunch of stuff that that just uh, doesn't work, or if it does work, is going to sort of not help you with that overall brand impression, you know? Uh, I can I, for example, um, there's a there's a there's a there's this lawyer. So I follow these blogs and stuff. There's this lawyer that always calls these guys out 
when they hire an SEO company and that company goes out there and floods the internet with these, um, uh, 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 I can't remember what the word is, the art, the spun articles, you know, where you take one article and you replace it with as many synonyms as you can to make a hundred different articles and you throw them all out in directories and they come back. Um, it just makes you look terrible. And it's, it's, uh, if you can find someone that's good like yourselves, right. Then, then that can make all the difference. Um, because it's reputation management too, you know, when, when people hire you, they're putting a lot of trust in you to make them look good because you can definitely make people look bad, you know? Right. Right. Well, I mean, I tell you what, I mean, I, here's an example I like to throw out there. It's like, okay. And it's, it's not the nicest example, but I think it really drives the point home, which is more important. You know, if, if you have, if you were to have cancer, if someone you know has, has cancer, you don't really just want to hire any oncologist out there. Like, you know, that's not what you're going to think. And, and frankly, you're probably not going to go to Google looking for one. You're also still going to ask people. So let's just get that out of the way. Okay. I'm an internet marketing person telling you that yes, people are not necessarily always going to go to Google for what their needs are, especially when their life is on the line. Okay, right. and, and usually legal issues are at least pretty dramatic in some way, shape, or form, whatever they are. My point is, is that um, you're going to want to hire the best oncologist that you possibly can as long as you can afford it. And, and so you're going to ask around. But here's the truth. You're probably going to end up looking up that person online. Oh, yeah. So what, what they have online and what that stuff, a la their website, social media, whatever, says about them is a really big deal. Now, I will also say, sure. If you truly don't have any friends or no one to ask or no one knows anyone, you actually might turn to Google. So that does happen. But either way, you know, to piggyback off what you're saying, who cares where you show up in Google? What matters more is that when people find you, whether they found you through Google or they were referred to you, what matters more is what does your stuff online do for you? Right. Does, it, does it help convince them that you're the person for their need? Does it help say, I am the credible expert that can solve your problem, life, legal, whatever it is. And, you know, and, 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 and a lot of times the honest answer is no. You know, I talk to lawyers so often where their, their thought is, well, I think what I have is good enough. And if any of you out there right now have said that to yourself, you, you seriously need to put yourself on timeout and, and, and ask yourself, do you people hire you because you're just good enough right? or uh, that's enough to get by? You know, why yeah. would you ever put anything out there? That's just, that's just good enough, you know? And so, you know, that, that, that's the kind of message that we're trying to really get out there. Yeah. I mean, your website is, is really your opportunity to make and to really, uh, start. It's a first impression for a lot of people, right? And you know what they say, right? You don't get a, a, what, a second chance at a first impression. And that's the opportunity for you to sort of begin the, the process of building trust, of building rapport, of continuing the message all the way through the whole, the whole series, right? Because uh, it'd, just be like, if it'd just be like if the opposite happened too. You know, let's say, let's say your website was killer, right? It was awesome. It, was, it, it looked great. The message was great. Uh, you looked like a pro. And then you go to this office and... Um, you know, it's all run down. And, you know, when you open the door, the receptionist glares at you and, and says, what are you doing here? You know, it's kind of the same thing. You know, you, a lot of people have that effect, that secondary effect with their, with their, uh, with their websites, right? Because people don't like them. Which brings me to what I want to, one of the first things I wanted to talk about, which is something that we, you told me today was the redesign of your site, Right. You just got that done. What is, well, it's, I think it's helpful because a lot of people here, uh, you know, they hear about and they know how important their website is, but they don't really, um, they may not know sort of what the key elements are in, in a good website. So what, I guess, what was, uh, what was wrong with your website? You know, what yeah. did you want to change and why, why did you decide to do that? Yeah, no, that, that question makes perfect sense, Chris. Um, well, in some ways, here's the irony of it all. 
Yeah, let me answer both the question for our website, but also I did think you asked a, a even more important question, which is what are those elements that make a website that kind of accomplishes what you and I were saying? But to answer the first part of the question, really, really, it, we reached the point where our website and our own marketing wasn't keeping up with what we were creating for clients. We were becoming a more established, credible, focused internet marketing firm for law firms. And what we were creating for our clients looked better than our own stuff. Right. You know, and, 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 and it was really that simple. And so we said, all right, we need to take our own advice a little bit. And, you know, that's not making an excuse. That's common with businesses. It, it's very easy to get focused on clients and forget to take care of your stuff, too. Um, but we've remedied that and we're in the process of some other things. But to answer your question about what are some of those elements of a website that, that, that really can create that, what I like to call that impression of expertise, credibility, um, you know, one of our favorite sayings is that people like to work with lawyers that they know, like, and trust. So how can your website help kind of accomplish that? You know, and, and there's really a few variables. You know, one of them is in design. Um, and when I say design, it's really important to know that I just mean a professional looking design. I'm not saying your goal is to create something beautiful. But people can tell when you spent money on your website design or when you threw something together or when your nephew did it for you five or ten years ago, you know? Right. Um, that that's one. I mean, the content's important, but that can get overplayed to be honest with you. I mean, having strong content's good. You want to make it clear what you do. But then some of the items that can really put your website over the top are things like featuring video, um, featuring some sort of free resource, free report that can be downloaded. Why? Why is uh, why is video or one of those things? Why why would you consider those uh, sort of benchmark? resources for a website why are they important what do they accomplish great great so so think about it like this so i arrive at i arrive at your website okay and and i'm browsing through your website and you've got this video and i click play and it's you introducing yourself and you're professional you're collected you communicate clearly it feels personal now i feel like i know you a little bit right okay maybe i even like you a little bit um sure. video also has been proven to kind of create a little bit more trust believe it or not um, we also like to recommend using video to answer common questions. So maybe having like a video FAQ on your website. And let's just say this right now, Chris, and, and if, if, if you disagree with me, well, that's fine. We can just end the show. <laughs> um, but you don't need to put a video commercial on your website. Right. They're already there. You don't right. need a commercial. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you're going to put video on your website, make it personal. You know, answer, answer common questions that you get. You know, so, you know, if you're a family law attorney, do a video FAQ where you talk about, uh, you know, uh, parenting during divorce, where you talk about um, how to protect your assets during a divorce or, or how to know if assets are being concealed from you, you right. know, you know, you know, you know, give and then what happens is people are looking through your web, website, you've got video and on your video, you're answering common questions that they probably have. So now not only do they feel like they know you a little bit and like you a little bit, but now you feel more credible. Because right. you're giving information. Blogs do the same thing. Okay, blogs is one of the things to have on your website because blogs is another way to showcase information. And by the way, when I say blogs, I don't mean articles about your cases. Okay, um, I mean articles such as you know, um, if you're a business attorney, you know, it might be you know five clauses that should be in all of your business contracts. You know, right. or you know, um, you know, five ways to make sure that your, you know, your business is legally protected. Yeah. Okay. So you know, way, information I, I can give you a couple, I can give you a couple of good, um, ways that I get content from my blog is I do two things. Whenever anyone asks a question to me, I write that down and make it a blog post, uh, because it's a question that other people probably have. Another thing I do is if you go on to Avvo, they have these, uh, I don't ever answer. I don't personally answer any other questions there. Cause I don't, I don't think it's, um, a, uh, a good sort of, uh, use of my time, but what I will do is I will steal the questions and then I will make them into blog posts, right? Because I think again, that they are often questions that, that other people are asking. Another thing that I, that I have started doing recently, and this was, um, after an interview that I just did a couple, maybe like a month or so ago with Mitch Jackson, who's a, a an attorney in uh, California. He's a really, he's a really good personal injury attorney. He does this thing called newsjacking, right? Where you take like, a um, some sort of a current event, something that's happened and you provide your opinion on it, um, with your legal twist, right? So for me, 
great fodder has been like Ray Rice, you know, uh, uh, running back and the things that happened to him with the, with the, with his criminal case, with the court, with the, with the NFL, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, when Justin Bieber was arrested, right. I talked about that, right. Because those are things that, uh, people can sort of, um, you can humanize that, right. And you can show your perspective and people can get to know you a little bit better because you're talking about, uh, um, current events and things that they understand, you know? Um, so I, and, 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 and I, I agree with everything you say, 100%. I've had people call our office and they just want to sign up. They don't even want to, they don't even need a need to, to talk about it because they say like, I've, I've listened to your podcast. I've re- you know, I've seen your videos. I'm ready to go. You know, like you, you, um, just tell me what the price is, you know, and I'm, I'm ready. I like those, uh, clients, you know, or potential clients. Those are fun. You know, we have uh, a, we have a client just like that. He's an immigration attorney and this is a guy who could get meetings with a U.S. Senator or, you know, congressman or congressman or congressman at a phone call. Right. But had to do a song and a dance to convince prospects that he's, you know, <laughs> that he's right. That he's, that he's actually a hot shot, you know, that he's actually really, really a big deal and knows his stuff. You know, so we came in and we redid his website so that that accurately communicated who he is and what he does. It had all these bells and whistles. You know, we started doing an email newsletter, videos, blogs, the whole the whole gauntlet, all these things to kind of create a robust online presence. And he literally says, you know, by the time somebody calls his office, the deal is already halfway done. Right. And, yeah. yeah. Let's take a quick time out for a sec. I'm sure there are a ton of you out there thinking, yeah, this all sounds great, but how do I actually do this stuff? How do I implement it? Let me introduce you to a program I've created called Law Firm Confidential. Law Firm Confidential is about one thing, results. I've unlocked the secrets of my success in step-by-step how-to fashion so you can see the results with your firm that you know you deserve. And if you're just starting out, what I've created is the best how to start a law firm program around. Don't sit around and let your life pass you by. Go to lawfirmmarketingmastery.com forward slash confidential today to find out how you can create the law firm of your dreams. Now, back to the good stuff. That's so powerful because literally, imagine your sales efforts, whether that's your secretary, you, whomever is responsible for your sales process, once somebody says, hey, I think you, you, you might be able to help me, imagine that literally getting cut in half or better, you know? Right. Yeah, the way I see it, when, when, people, call, uh, when people call my firm, I always expect that they've seen enough that they just want to make sure that what they've seen matches up with reality. You know what I'm saying? Yes. That, that, so that when people, that, so, so that you, and this, this should go without saying, but you need to make sure that, that the professionalism that you're going to build up and project on the internet does need to carry over to your actual office and the way that pe- pe- you treat people, right? Because if they don't match up, that's going to cause a disconnect with people and they're going to become, you know, immediately nervous. You know, if you talk about how great and professional you are and then you don't return a phone call for four days, well, those two things don't add up, you know? Um, but I agree with you 100%. I mean, I, I think that, uh, your website is critical and, and it's like you said too, you know, it's, it's not so much just for people that find you randomly, but I can tell you whenever I meet anyone, I basically go to Google and just check them out, you know? And I, and, and, what I mean by that is I just Google them and see what comes up and you, you know, you'd be surprised at, at some of the things that you can find and some of the, the, the things that people share. But, um, <laughs> when it comes to, when it comes to lawyers, you can really sort of, uh, show a lack of, of, uh, it's not professionalism, but just sort of a lack of planning, you know, and a, and a lack of projecting, what you want out there. Well, that is how it comes across though. In some, I mean, in some ways though, when you think about the younger generation, it is coming across as a lack of professionalism though. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's, you know, at the beginning of the conversation, right. I talked about tr- like just marketing, like what do we know about marketing? Like the same reason you wouldn't show up to a mid workday networking event in shorts and flip flops and a t-shirt because you know that that just communicates you in the wrong way. Right. Why would you put up a website or anything else online that, that that's half-assed, you know? And but we just we just don't think of the internet in the same way, you know. And that's what that that's what we want to. That's part of this whole what I, thing I mean about rethink this, rethink this. How can the internet really serve your needs? We're not saying Google can't be part of it, and rankings can't be part of it. But man, there are some 
there are some much larger needs that need to be addressed when it comes to internet marketing. And, you know, we're talking about really one of the big ones right now with website. Right, right. So what, and well, uh, we've, we sort of talked about this, but not, not necessarily, not necessarily specifically, but, um, in your experience, what, what are a couple of the, of like common mistakes that, that people make, you know, whether or not they want to, um, whether or not, well, I would, I would, I guess I would push everyone to at least, you know, call you and talk to you and, and, and maybe get like an, an, you know, an audit or have like a consultation or something. But if they want to do just a self audit of sort of their internet presence or their website, what are some things that are sort of basic must haves, um, that, that you would look for, uh, for one of your clients or you would expect them to have? Well, I mean, it really, it really is the website. And honestly, just having a website that looks like it was put together on purpose by, by a company, um, if you can't afford to get video on it, you know, um, if you don't have the time or aren't able to retain a marketing company to do things like blogging and social media and those things yet, that, that's fine. You can still have a, a, a really sharp looking website with strong content. And, and I got to I got to interrupt you real quick. Yeah. OK, because uh, one, I, I do not accept the excuse or the, 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 the reason or whatever that I don't have enough money so I can't blog or I can't put video up. I'm, I'm not going to let you give it out to all the listeners. OK, and I know that you don't think that that's the case. I know that you don't think that's the case, but. That is one of the things that I hear all the time, and I'm sure you hear it all the time, is, you know, oh, I don't have time to write an article, or I don't have time to make this video, and that's just ridiculous, you know, because it doesn't take that long. It's just scary because it's different, and it's not lawyery necessarily, you know. It's not, uh, it's not, the, it's not the, the, the way that you think about it when you think about what lawyers do, and it's critical though. It's one of those things that I, I think if, if you're going to have a website and you're not going to have a, a blog or you're not going to have fresh content and you're not going to, you're not going to have video or audio or something where you're talking to someone that you're, 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 you're not, you're not staying steady. You're falling back, you know, because, because there are people, I mean, every day there are more and more people that are adopting that stuff. And if you don't get on the bandwagon now, you're going to fall behind, you know, very quickly. Well, let, let's just be honest, Chris. You kind of tricked me there because you kind of asked me what the bare minimum. No, no, I didn't trick you. But... No, I'm sorry. I didn't trick you. I didn't. Like I said, that's what I meant, though. I didn't mean because and I didn't mean it because of the way you said it. But I just meant it because you said it, because I know that that um, I look, I talk to a lot of like you do. I talk to a lot of people that are sort of struggling and all they're waiting for is for us to give them some sort of like validation for a reason why they they can't do something or shouldn't do something. And I, I agree with you 100%, but, but I just know I could just see, um, some listeners nodding their heads when you're like, Oh, they don't have enough time. And, and I didn't let you finish either, which I'm sure you probably would have wrapped it all together, but I could just see people going, you're right. You know what? I don't yeah. have enough time to make a video. Yeah. I don't have well, enough time to make it. a blog. No, let's do it. Let's address it head on. I mean, yeah, what we're really should be saying is you can't afford not to do this stuff. Right. You know, so I no, agree. No, you're right. No, you're right. And uh, yeah, I mean, the bottom line is that, and I do have these conversations daily. If if you're going to start investing, you know, well, we keep saying money or time. I mean, one of the pieces of advice I would throw out there too is that um, careful what marketing you take on yourself. Um, and this isn't a push for my company. I don't care who, who your listeners hire, you know, just hi hire someone good who does what you need because a lot of the times, um, figure out what you need to do, if any of it yourself. But, um, you know, you're, you're, for example, let's say you have a company doing an email newsletter for you. Okay. Rather than you sitting around putting together your email newsletter for the month, go out to a networking event and get 50 more people to add to your email newsletter. You know, you know, your, your time spent doing legal work for your clients and doing business development for your firm is much better spent than doing your own marketing. So I, I, I to kind of take the conversation sideways just a little bit. One big thing I would say is that, you know, don't be ridiculous about this. Retain somebody to do this stuff for you who has a turnkey process, 
who can demonstrate the value to you, um, who, who, can, who can show you that it's working, who can give you past clients to talk to, to see what their right. experience is, and sign it up, sign up, don't look back, and then you go out and do the work. You know, you know, make sure you, you know, do your legal work, do business development, do all that. So that, that is one of the conversations I have a lot, and I feel like that does kind of relate, hopefully, <laughs> to what you were saying. Definitely. And, and that I think it's a good lead into sort of another um, I think another sort of pitfall that that people um, fall into when they when they do something like this is sort of like a timeline for expected results, you know, because I, I know I talked to because <laughs> the, the right in the because the fact of the matter is it's 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 a it's going to be probably a little bit of a longer game than you want. And what I mean by that is someone's not going to hire you and the phone is going to start ringing tomorrow. Right. You know, um, it's a, it's sort of a process and it's a, and it's, um, and even more than that, it's kind of like momentum that, that you have to build up, you know? So it's kind of like, um, what, what, there's some analogy. It's sort of like, you know, when you start, there's a huge rock, right? And even if it's on, on a flat street or something, you're pushing it and you're, you have to work so hard to just even get it started to get going. But eventually the, the ball starts rolling and you're pushing it, you're pushing it. And then at some point the ball is going fast enough where it starts to pull you along, you know, and, uh, talk a little bit about expectations for, yes. you know, something like this and, and just sort of give me your experience on it and, and your thoughts. I love, yeah. So th this is a great topic to talk about. It all depends on the services being provided. You know, what we're talking about, though, the kind of marketing we're talking about, getting back to the basics of building a strong brand, staying connected and top of mind, that type of thing. You're right. That's much more of a long term thing. So here's the conversation I have with clients and prospects is that you have to understand what what can be assessed and what can't be. So an Internet marketing company can assess data and statistics. Right. You know, we can know visitors to your website. We can know social media growth and you know or how many people saw something on social media we can know how many people opened your newsletter that's all numbers right but one of the things you have to pay attention to is the experiential return and you've actually already commented on this you said that you've noticed that that what you've been doing online has actually made it easier for you to close because people call and they're ready to go for sure. That's not as easy to quantify. I mean, you could you could spend a ton of time and really figure out, well, how much time do I now save? And I spend seven minutes on this per person in 30. I mean, you could really do that, but who's going to sit around and do that? You know? Right. Um, but you begin to notice things like that. So, so to try to streamline the answer to the question, the results I would look for are, do people seem easier to close with? Do they seem to be challenging you less on your rates? Are your referrals going up? That is one you can track. Forget where they're coming from, just are you getting more referrals? Right. Um, these are the kind of things we encourage our clients to pay attention to internally. And, and so that's what to look for. And then how long, yeah, it can take six months, it can take 12 months sometimes because you're really building something different. Right. Um, you know, you're really, you're, really, you're really building momentum. And, and uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, let me, just, let me just add this one thing, Chris, I mean, it is the trap that a lot of us get into of, well, what I, what I really want to track are leads and phone calls and all of these things. And, um, you know, it's not every law firm can necessarily create a lead generating machine online with just Google and all that stuff. And even some of the ones that do, their lives are crazy because majority of those leads kind of are terrible anyway. Right. They're tire. I call them tire kickers, man. They're yeah, terrible. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean... You, it's 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 really the fault of internet marketing and SEO companies that have built this idea of what I want to track are leads, phone calls, and I want to track it now, and I want to see all this growth. And again, let's go back to marketing and traditional marketing. Okay, you know you don't you don't actually say, well, did you see my billboard? Is that why you called me? Right. No, they just know they know who the heck you are. They don't they don't know if it was because of their billboard or not, or neither do you. But what you know is. Ever since you put up that billboard and started running that commercial and started doing all these other things, your bottom line's grown by 25%. You you know you're closing better by 20%, and you're more profitable. And all and all of these things that are experiential 
and internal to the firm. So um, you got you got to really watch that stuff internally, and 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 and. and yeah, and that's really the kind of stuff internet marketing should be doing for you. Does that does that kind of crystallize it at all? Or yeah, yeah. Well, right, it definitely. And I think I think um, you know, like you said, it can take it can. And we both said it, but it can take some time. And I think, but because I think one of the things that people, one of the traps we fall into is sort of giving up uh, on something just a little too early. Do you know? Um, and sort of like, uh, for example, I, I can, and I'll tell you my example, right? So I, I, I dabbled in radio ads, okay? That was my first mistake was dabbling and not just jumping in. The second mistake was I didn't give it enough time to sort of build momentum up. So um, I sort of had the wrong expectations, I, I feel like, and uh, I, I wasted my money not because it, it, was, pro it was like a bad mm, marketing idea, but because it was poorly executed. You know, and that I think happens a lot with us with when I mean, say us, I mean, lawyers, law firm owners, business owners, is that we don't have um, realistic expectations at the beginning and have a budget in the timeline that we're going to stick to before we actually look back and see if the work has paid off, you know, because one thing, because, for example, one thing you could test is conversions, right, um, with things like that. You know, you could test, basically you want to just make sure you, I mean, at the end of the day, let's be honest, after six months, you want to be making more money than you were making before. Right. I mean, that's the, that's it. At the end of the day, that's the truest test. You know I mean? If, uh, if you're not, then that's, that's, I mean, that's not a good, that's not good at all. But, uh, it's, it's, uh, I guess I'm just, I just want to make sure that people know that services like yours, can and do work, but you have to have a, a budget and you have to really just say, look, I'm going to give this six months before I make any decisions about like quitting, you know, to see what happens. Because I think people will sometimes go for two months. They won't be satisfied. They'll quit. You know, when probably that third, fourth month is when stuff really starts to, starts to happen, you know? I, I do. I, I want to add one element to what you're saying though, too. I think that you also have to decide up front what your goals are and what strategy you're trying to implement. Because then, let's right. go back. Even even if you were to this, this is really important. I feel like for your listeners, even if you all were to decide, okay, I'll have patience. I'll give this six months. I'll spend the money. What are you spending it on? What is your strategy? Okay, that's really important too. Because remember, my, our whole premise, why our company exists, is because we do think that most internet marketing companies and thus law firms as well are kind of, you know, taking their internet marketing, I don't want to call it the wrong direction, but, you know, not in the best direction for them. So um, I don't, I'm not trying to create an excuse for any of your listeners to not dive in, uh -huh, right? but decide what your strategy is and be real sure about what you think you're setting out to accomplish and then dive in and spend the money. Yeah. So, so let's talk about that real quick too. Do, I mean, um, what, um, and, and we're going to have to speak sort of in generalities here because we're not have a specific law firm that we're looking at or anything, but let's say it's someone that's, you know, relatively a new, a relatively new law firm, right? They don't have much mm -hmm. there, right? Mm -hmm. um, where, where would you spend your, um, you know, initial time and money? You know, if there's one thing that, that sort of um, goes above, because, for example, you know what will happen. What happens is people will sort of get like three or four or five projects at a time. They'll get on Twitter and they'll they'll shoot a couple tweets out. They'll get on Facebook. They'll you know they'll do a couple things when probably they should just be writing like an article a day, not even paying any attention to Facebook and Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure their website looks good and then you know establish the base first. Um, what do, what do you? Where would you spend? Where would you suggest that people sort of look first? If they if they are relatively bare bones with everything that they have, you know, actually one of my favorites is is really an email newsletter. Yeah. Um, because again, this goes back to the probably the most significant core competency of marketing, which is staying connected and staying top of mind. I mean, especially if you're starting out on your own, your book of business or creating a book of business really needs to come from your network. Yeah. For, which you should also be growing at the same time, by the way, but. But um, 
I'm a big fan of email newsletters. Now, how you do them really matters. So why don't we talk about that real quick? We Let's talk about it. I'm curious. I just started one about two months. Well, I just really kind of committed to one about two months ago. And I have my other, everyone of the other attorneys in my firm, uh, I'm make, basically making them um, do one too. I'm kind of managing it for them, but Tell me, let's do this. Yeah. I'm, well, I'm interested. Honestly, it's relatively simple. We, I mean, we have a formula. It's not the only formula, but it's one that works really well for our clients. And that is that your newsletter should really be focused on same concepts, really being informative, kind of positioning you as a resource for something. So how do you be seen as a resource for something? Well, you give people information that would be helpful to them. So listen, if you want to mention your new associate in your newsletter or you want to mention your new office space, go for it. But that better be short and sweet and to the point and move on from it. What we like to focus on in a newsletter is typically featuring some sort of article. Again, going back to kind of how we talked about, you know, um, you know, five tips to make the adoption process easier, you know, or, um, you know, you know, just, you know, th think things like that. So, or, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, what to do if you get pulled over for a DUI. I mean, <laughs> those, those kind of things, whatever. But, but, um, you know, if you're an estate planning attorney, and you're sending out a newsletter to people, doesn't it make sense that your newsletter would contain some sort of information that would be helpful to people in thinking about their estate, protecting their assets, their will, you know, things like that. So yes. the article should, sorry, the newsletter should feature an article or articles about that. Even better if they can come from you, something that you or your firm has created. So yeah. really, really in a nutshell, I, 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 mean, I have a couple kind of cherries on top I want to add, but really in a nutshell, send people a newsletter that has an article that would be interesting or helpful to them. And that's, that should change a lot of the experience you're having if you're not doing that already. All right, everyone. Now I want to take another time out for a sec. A lot of people think the Law Firm Marketing Mastery training programs are just about making money. And honestly, yeah, there's a lot of that. Spend some time with me and you're definitely going to be making more money. But there's so much more to it than just making money. It's important to be rich and have a great life too. I want you to be great at work, great at home, great with your friends and family. I want you to step it up everywhere. I want you to get results with your life, not just with your business. And the results are real. I've had many conversations with members who are experiencing big time success. If you're listening to Law Firm Marketing Mastery, you are the type of person who's already interested in improving themselves. There's a lot of options out there today and I think you have already decided. If you want to check out your options for improving your business and living the life of your dreams, Check out lawfirmmarketingmastery.com forward slash confidential. Hope to hear from you soon. Enjoy the rest of the show. Um, but another thing, a couple little, you know, cherries on top, like I said, yeah. is that we love to put video in the newsletters. Okay. okay. Um, do you use a, do you use a, um, what email uh, service provider yeah. do you use? We like MailChimp, but I mean. That's right. That's what I use. There's a lot out there, but, you know, we, we use MailChimp and that, yeah. that, that honestly can be a whole separate conversation. But um, an, another biggie is um, you want to drive people back to your website, you know, because your website, kind of like we talked about earlier, should be that main kind of tool that really communicates fully who you are and what you do and why someone should hire you. So, for example, put put a portion of your blog article in your newsletter and then put a little button for read more to finish it on the website. Or, or, or when you put your video in your newsletter, you're not really putting the video in your newsletter. You're actually putting a link to your video uh, which hopefully is on your website, so people kind of end up back there. So, um, so when you do a newsletter like this, a couple of things happen, Chris. You know, you stay connected with people, you stay top of mind. But when you're staying top of mind, you're also reinforcing what you focus on. You're reinforcing what you do, and sometimes that can be the difference between, um, oh, wow, I didn't know you did that. I knew someone a few months ago that needed that, and. Hi, this is Bob. Sally referred me. Sally's my neighbor, and she told me you can help out with something like this. Why? Because you know Bob is constantly being reminded not only that you exist, but he's also being reminded of, of what you focus on and what you're good at. So I think that's really good for any attorney, but especially when you're starting, because you really want to create that top of mind awareness and stay connected and make sure people know know what you do and, and that you're good at it. You know, because right. you're giving out information. I agree with you 100%. Uh, um, I, I, and I have two, two other things that, that um, sort of things that I'll share that I do that I'm sure I know one that is, is critical for you too. I'm not sure about the other one, but the, the one thing that's important for me and, and the thing that I sort of stress to uh, people that I talk to and, and, you know, people in my firm is consistency, right? 
if you if you're gonna if you say you're gonna do it every Friday, do it every Friday. You know, don't skip and don't don't move around because uh, if you do it well, people will come to expect it. You know, if if you're even like mildly entertaining and provide good value and information, people will actually like to get them. You know, and and uh, they won't be intrusive. You'll sort of teach them to expect it week after week. You know, um, the other thing that I do is. I've started mine as an autoresponder. So um, it's a whole sequence, you know, that because every that way, every time somebody comes into my network or gets put into the system, they start at the beginning, you know, which starts with kind of a welcome email. Like this is the um, this is the newsletter. This is how you got on the list. This is what you can expect in the future, that kind of thing. Um, so people aren't just getting sh put right in the middle. It also helps them because too, if you if you plan it ahead just a little bit, you can sort of set your content up to provide even more value. You know, so like what I've started was uh, kind of a series of emails about what to do if you get in a car accident. You know, sort of the the stages that you can go through and what you can expect and things like that. Um, but that is, you're right, a hundred percent. And the newsletter is an easy way to sort of to to get clients fast too. Because people in your network, they want to help you anyway, most of the time. You know, I mean, you're already going to have some of that no like, trust with them. Uh, they just need to know what you do and sort of just be reinforced that you have some expertise, which the newsletter can do. Yeah. Let me actually give you a couple of stories, too, of how I've seen this be powerful, you know, for some of our clients. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, I've got one client that because her newsletter goes out and we're intentional for her face to be in her newsletter. I mean, she has a little bio picture, but since she also has videos, her face is, you know, very present. Yep. Um, you know, she said that, you know, that this is somebody just so you know, I mean, this is somebody that has a really, this, she's a solo, but she has a really good law firm. You know, they gross, you know, um, you know, well over a half million that she's really successful yet. <laughs> nobody in the office, uh, um, people that came in for consultations would know who she was, that she's the owner of this, this law firm, they'd be coming to see her associates. Now, when she's walking through the hallways of her office, people that are in for consultations with her associates are like, oh my gosh, you're such and such. You know, right. I see you in the newsletter. It's like her newsletters made her a big deal. You yeah. know, and, and I've got another client, this one's, this one's really quick, but um, talk about newsletter and video being impactful. Um, I've got another client who, um, I can't get into too much detail, but basically somebody watched her, her videos and commented on how it actually changed the way they started to parent during their divorce. And it's literally right. like your videos changed a portion of my life. Right. You talk about brand power and loyalty and potential referrals. I mean, that's, you know, that's just more valuable than where you show up on Google. You know what I mean? So I, I and, a, and a well done newsletter can have that kind of impact, especially if it has video or something like that. So, yeah. I agree. I mean, I think, I think if you're listening to this, that I think that's, that is probably the, 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 that probably is. And I, I, you know what, that's okay. Oh, I'm going to just, that shows how good you are. Right. Because that is the perfect answer. And that is not the answer that I give everybody, but it is going to be from now on because it is the, I'm serious. It is like the, it is, um, it's cheap, right? First of all, and it's very, very effective, you know? Um, it's awesome. It's perfect. Okay. So that's really good. That's really good stuff. Uh, all right. Let's shift gears a little bit. We're, we're sort of getting close to time. Um, but I did want to talk to you about this and, and we've sort of been talking about it uh, just in a roundabout way with our conversation, but there's a new, um, sort of, um, graphic that you guys have created. I don't, I don't, I don't know exactly what you want to call it, but it's sort of, it's sort of, I guess, encompasses <laughs> the philosophy behind the, the way that you guys work, right? Yeah. Um, it's that more than, it's that more than, um, just search engine, um, stuff with your website. There's, there's more to it. So, so, and, and I'm going to put this, um, in the, in the sort of the show notes, uh, this picture, okay. that's okay. So, and so people will get it. People will see what they're talking about. But explain a little bit about what this is and, and um, yeah. you know, how, how it became built. Yeah, sounds good. So it, it really, we kind of already talked about the, the top part where, where it talks about enhancing your image. That's just our kind of uh, sexy way of saying build your brand, okay? 
we call it enhance your image. And we've already talked about that because really the main priority when it comes to your image, your credibility should be your website. And so those bullets that you see underneath enhance your image are really just some of the features of a website that you can kind of put over the top. So kind of cast that to the side. What really matters is those two circles at the bottom, okay? And th this is really how we explain how the internet should work. So real quick kind of disclaimer that might help as we're talking about this. Um, this should influence how you use the internet. That's kind of the idea. We might have to have a second podcast where we actually talk about how some of these tools can be leveraged. because We just don't have time for it tonight. And I'm happy to give away trade secrets because it's not a big deal. Um, but, you know, on the left-hand side, we have the idea of multiplying referrals. And what we mean by that is, is picture a circle made up of people that are in your network. These are people you already know. This could be clients, colleagues, referral sources, family members, whomever. Um, what we want to do is ask ourselves, how can internet marketing help us stay connected with them? Right. Okay? Because, by the way, Texas Tech School of Business did a study that said... 83% of your satisfied customers are willing to refer to you, but only 29% of them are. Oh, by the way, for all of you out there that aren't good at math, that means that you could double or triple your law firm if you were getting all the referrals you could. Right. So our point is, how can we get more referrals? Well, by staying connected with people. So here's the bottom line point. The people you already know are spending time online. So what we do is we look at the circle and we divide it up into kind of pieces of a pie. Where are they spending time? People spend time on search engines, especially if they're looking for you. They spend time on social media. They spend time reading blogs. They spend time watching video. They spend time checking their email. So all the point is of the circle is to say, well, if you're doing things in these spaces, then you can use those items, social media, email, et cetera, to stay connected with those people. Right. Pretty simple. So take any of the things you want to do on the internet and say to yourself, how can these things help me stay connected with people I already know? Right? Yep. Second circle is a little faster to explain. This circle will be made up of the people searching online that you don't know. So they're not in your circle, quote unquote, but this is the a high percentage of people that are at least going online. Really all of us are online at some point doing something. Um, it's no different than uh, we watch TV, right? And so people advertise to us through commercials because we're watching TV. I don't go to my TV to decide where I'm going to buy my next car. I just watch TV. The idea is that, is that how can you also make sure that you get exposure to people that might not already know you exist, um, but you know one day they might they might need what you do. Here's the great part: it's that those people are spending time in the same places. They're still spending time on search engines. They're still spending time reading blog articles. They're still spending time on social media. So the question just simply becomes, well, how can we also make sure that what we're doing in those places reaches new people? And again, there's, there's, we have to kind of dive into this you know, to, to, to explain it. But you know, a real quick, simple example is, well, on social media, you can do advertisements to reach new people. But then you can also make sure that your firm connects with your clients to stay connected with them. Right. So all of these things can be multi-purpose to both multiply referrals by staying connected with those you already know and increasing visibility by making sure that you have a, a, a large presence throughout different spaces of the internet. Because the bottom line is that these are the places people are spending time. So the more time that your marketing exists in these places, then the more that these things are going to happen. And then the arrow to point back up at the top is just saying all these things to drive people back to your website, your social media, your blogging, et cetera. You want to send people there because that's kind of your main, your main hub that, that, that says, I'm the answer to your problem or my firm is the answer to your problem. Right. No, it's a great, it's a great uh, uh, concept. And it's, uh, it's um, the, the, the graphic, I think, demonstrates it very well. It also shows you a great way to sort of leverage um, what you're doing across multiple channels too, you know, um, it's basically like you said, you know, so like, uh, to give you an example of something that I would do, you know, like this podcast, I don't, I don't do a video with this podcast, but if I did, you put the video up on YouTube, you make it, you pull the audio out, you make it a podcast that goes up on iTunes. Both of those go into a blog post, which then gets shared on Twitter and Facebook. It also gets emailed out to my list, you know, but all of that stuff drives people that you don't know 
uh, to your website if they're just searching for the topic or, or they somehow stumble upon it. It also drives the people that you do know to your website because they are going to be friends with you on Facebook, maybe you're following you on Twitter or get your email or whatever. Um, exactly. So it's a fantastic concept. I love it. It's great. Um, uh, um, you know, you know what you're doing, obviously, and it's good. It's a great concept. And I think, I, I, and I will say this too, you know, you, you, um, I don't know if it was in your email or when we were talking beforehand or even when during the podcast, but, uh, you know, I think this sort of philosophy is something that, that makes you different from what a lot of other sort of marketing companies do. You know, you don't, you don't hear about the different, these sort of two separate channels and using them both um, to sort of work off of one another. I think it's, I think it's a great concept. Um, okay. All right. So uh, we've had fun, but our time is almost up. So we got, I've got three basic, basically sort of rapid fire questions that I'm going to shoot to you. And then we are going to wrap up. Is that cool? Yeah. All right. Question number one. Um, uh, you know, so, you know, there's, uh, um, rapid 25, fire. what's that? Rapid fire. Oh yeah. Rapid fire. You got 25 bucks. I, I want to go to Amazon and buy a book that's going to change my life, make my business better. What, what book should I read? e -myth, and maybe more specifically e -myth for the attorney. Okay. All right. I actually haven't read the attorney one. Um, I've read, I've read e -myth mastery and e -myth revisited. They're excellent books. Um, the attorney one is good though, huh? Yeah. I mean, as far as, you know, I, I'm an EMIT fan too. And, and pretty much they don't teach in law school how to actually run a business. I but, agree. Um, but, but yeah, EMIT, absolutely. Critical. Okay. What is the one question that I didn't ask you that I should have? Um, first one that comes to mind is, is maybe what is a good budget for some of this stuff? You okay. know, because, because I know there's so many options out there, but there's so many, uh, price points. So it, it become really hard to assess that. And so, you know, I, I could have elaborated on that. Good. Well, give me the 30 second answer. Sure. 30 second answer is, um, <laughs> good. <laughs> 30 second answer. Uh, it, it's hard to say. I think we're pretty middle of the road priced and this is not an attempt to, to promote us. Our average clients pay around a thousand dollars a month, maybe a little bit more. Okay. That's probably a good benchmark in terms of getting the full experience of doing all those things you see in the chart where your image is being built, you're getting more referrals, you're, you're building this presence. You can spend more and do more. Um, when you begin to spend less and remove things from this, that's when I become worried of the result. Because as you explained earlier with your podcast, social media, email, all that example, all those things enhance one another. So, um, so thousand dollars a month, it really could be a good kind of uh, point. If you can find this quality of service for less, go for it. If you find it for more, eh, you know, you can probably work on it. But um, but don't be fooled by the services list. Find out what those companies are doing for those services, and that should begin to line up with the price points a little bit more. Yeah, but, but it should be a good giving... investment to get this stuff done. Yeah, I was gonna. Yeah, I was just gonna say if someone's giving you full, you know, full service like that. Um, and they are asking for less than that, I would be wary. Right, you know? right. I mean, especially uh, if they're writing the blog articles, you yeah. know, they're creating the social media content, you know, I mean, all of these things, yeah. It's just like when people come in to buy legal services, you know, at some point you get what you pay for, you know, yeah. and you just got to understand that, that good value costs money, just bottom line, you know? Okay, last, do you well, have something else? Way to analyze it. If you were... If yeah, if you were to do all the all these things on your own, how much time would you spend and how much do you charge per hour? Right. Now a marketing company will probably do it better in half the time. So here's the fun thing to ask yourself. If you saved that time and went and did business development, how much more money would you make? And then how much would your marketing company also help you make because they're doing those things correctly? Right, right. Yeah, it's a no brainer. Um, okay, final question. If people want help or want to learn more about, you know, you and your company. How can they uh, find you? How can they get in touch with you? Where would you like them to go? And, you know, what would you like them to do? Well, you know, honestly, I mean, I'll start by saying give us a call. I, I love talking about this stuff. You know, we make part of our sales conversations education. You know, let, let's let make sure that this is what you want and uh, and, 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 and make sure it's going to be the right fit for you. So um, anyone can give, give, give the office a call. They can ask for me, specifically Mark. 
I'd be happy okay. to talk to them. Our office number is 305-433-4600. But I'll tell you what, also uh, check out our website, onemarketingagency.com. One is spelled out, so O-N-E, marketingagency.com. And you know what? We've got a couple of resources on there. We've got a, a, a free resource you can download um, specifically for lawyers when it comes to marketing. We've got a, a, a month, or I'm sorry, a weekly newsletter we send out with marketing tips. So I would say go get some of our resources. We're not going to spam you. It's meant to be helpful and informative to you. And if you want to dialogue about this, just give me a call and I'd be happy to chat. Okay. Awesome, man. Well, I've had a great time. I hope uh, you have too. I know you've provided a ton of great value to everyone. And uh, thank you for being here. Sure. I, I want to give one closing thought, if that's okay. Yeah, if I'm allowed definitely. to. So um, sure. right, here's one thing we like to say. And we're not trying to throw SEO companies under the bus, but, but here's what you got to think about. A lot of internet marketing companies that strictly focus on SEO, search engine optimization, search engine rankings, and that's all the conversations about keywords, all this stuff. They're not marketers, they're mathematicians because they know how to manipulate and maneuver to accomplish or, or to you know, work within an algorithm that Google creates to get you a result. Do you want a mathematician or do you want a marketer? That's not a promotion of my own company. It's saying when you're going out trying to hire someone for marketing, think about that. Are these people marketers or are they mathematicians? Okay, right. because if you want marketing, get marketers. So that's my thought. All right, great closing thought. Uh, so with that, um, thanks, and uh, we'll hopefully talk to you again. I'll, I'll have you on here again too if you want. Yeah, sounds great. We, we can actually give away all of our secrets. Sounds fun. All right, cool. Thanks, Chris. All right. Okay, see, I wasn't lying to you. Great, great interview. Uh, a couple of things that I, I took away from that, which are, which I thought were critical. Uh, one, the email newsletter list. You know, get started on that right now. I am. I am uh, have been doing it. I've got my associate doing it, my partner, even my law clerk. They have their own list that they send out to because that's how powerful it can be. Um, another thing that I wanted to say was, uh, you know, make sure that you take the time to do this stuff. You know, don't use excuses that you don't have enough time. Get in there and do it. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say was, you know, I'm on. I'm in the process of making a um, sort of a step by step how to create your own email um, uh, autoresponder series so that every time you meet someone new uh, you can take it with the people that you have now in your network you can pop them into this autoresponder and they'll set a series of emails that will start to get you calls and start to get you referrals so be on the lookout for that uh, I'm really excited uh, I've already got the first three videos I think created for that and just got to get the rest knocked out so uh, with that enjoy your uh, week and I will talk to you soon Special thanks to you guys for listening, show feedback, and guest suggestions. I rely on you all to keep my finger on the pulse. So if you know someone that is a good fit for the show, let me know. Chris at lawfirmmarketingmastery.com and of course, Law Firm Confidential details there as well. Go ahead and email or call me honestly. That's the best way to get in touch and I'll give you everything you need to know about my programs. If you're listening but aren't subscribed in iTunes or Stitcher, go ahead and make the change there because getting your shows delivered free to your phone or computer while you sleep is the best way to make sure you don't miss anything. Just go to iTunes or Stitcher and search for Law Firm Marketing Mastery. That's it. And if you want to write me a nice review, I'll love you forever there as well because it helps other people find me and it's really important to keep my show ranks up. So tell your friends because the greatest compliment you can give us is a referral to someone else, either in person or share it on the web. So have a great week. Go out there and take care of business and know that the work you put in today is going to pay off 10 times over tomorrow.